This morning, police cracked down. Officers urging the community to follow new coronavirus rules or face jail time as some in the community fail to get the message. Coronavirus cluster health officials desperately working to track down those who could have been exposed to airport baggage handlers who've tested positive to COVID-19. And Roo Rescue, a kangaroo saved from a deep canal by Gold Coast locals who happened to spot him while working from home. This is 7 News with Angie Asimus. Good morning. Police will continue to raid parks and other public places today, warning anyone without a valid reason to be outdoors to move on. New South Wales officers were spotted enforcing strict new social distancing rules in Sydney yesterday as sunbakers and picnickers flouted the laws. Obviously there are uh, very dramatic restrictions. Uh, they're restrictions the like of which we have never seen in Australia before. And that's because we are facing the worst pandemic in at least 100 years. In New South Wales, those who break the rules face a $1,000 on-the-spot fine. For repeat offenders, the penalty increases to up to $11,000 and six months in jail. A group of backpackers is lucky not to have faced those tough new penalties after they were spotted drinking together on a hostel rooftop in Sydney. Neighbours tipped off police in Kings Cross last night, concerned the group was breaking the new rules. However, the backpackers argue they are all residents of the same premises, so technically weren't in breach. Officers dispersed the crowd and let them off with a warning. Authorities are now considering harsher penalties for people who spit at others during the coronavirus pandemic. It comes as a 17-year-old girl and 29-year-old man were charged over separate ugly clashes. Two Australian sisters set upon with a barrage of racial slurs in Marrickville. Yeah, yeah! Really disgusting things like, you know, um, stay away from them, they've got the coronavirus because they're Asian. They Rosa and Sophie Doe decided enough was enough, but when they tried to stand up for themselves, the attack turned physical. Spat in my face, her spit got right in my eye, my left eye. The entire like left portion of my face was covered in her spit. The 17-year-old has now been charged with six offences, including common assault and using offensive language. It's disgusting behaviour and it's not the Australian thing to do. A police officer was also spat at here in Maroubra by a man who had allegedly abused lifeguards when they tried to remind him the beach is now closed. 29-year-old Andrew Merrifull allegedly headbutted and spat on a female sergeant as they tried to arrest him. The officer was injured. He denies assaulting or spitting on her. I definitely did not spit at her. I was shocked when she accused me of it. I was breathing deeply and I, I think it frightened her as well, my presence. He was granted bail and now wants the officer to know. Sorry, yeah, I'm sorry that I hurt you. I'm sorry that I got upset. Authorities promising harsh penalties if this behaviour continues. Maybe it's a $5,000 final sharpen people up on this. Amber Laidler, 7 News. The New South Wales Commissioner is also getting tough on foreign cruise ships, saying the Navy could be called in to remove them from our waters. Mick Fuller sat down with Seven's Mark Ferguson to talk about the battle on the sea and back on land and forcing people to take social distancing seriously. What is your number one concern right now? The concern for mine is getting the community to take those health warnings seriously. And I know many Australians and many people from New South Wales are, are listening but I guess the numbers who aren't are concerning. Do you and your force have to get a lot tougher over the next few days to make sure this works? We're prepared to. I'd much rather work with the community. Have I got this right? Unless you have an essential reason to leave your house, you must remain in lockdown, you must remain behind closed doors. Yeah, and work's still essential for those that still have jobs. So unless you have a reason, unless you have a very good reason to be outside your house, you are in lockdown? Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. And to the point, anyone not thinking about following the rules on an individual basis, can you get a look at them from here? Look, in terms of us looking at the breaches and looking at are they particular areas happening, is it in supermarkets or is it uh, in, in playing fields, or soccer fields, what does that look like? Yeah, we do. This is the place that will churn that out in terms of taskings. These cruise ships are a real problem, aren't they? We've got nine cruise ships at the moment. We started with 13, so we are 
winning slowly. What's the answer then? Must they turn around? Must they leave our waters? Eventually they'll have to. They've been given a government order. They are going through the appeal process for that. My understanding is that will move fairly quickly. Is there the chance the Navy must get involved and force these boats out? Potentially. We could call on Defence. Defence are involved in the operation, but I would certainly like to think that diplomacy will be the lead here. And given all this, have you had time to maybe take that commissioner's cap off and think of a dad as a father? You know, well, my house is in isolation. The kids have been home from school and it may not just all be normal after the school holidays. So we've just got to prepare ourselves that perhaps things won't be the same as they were in 2019. Uh, doesn't mean that they're going to be worse. All right. Well, we appreciate your time and wish you all the best for the weeks and months ahead. Thanks very much. Victoria police are also cracking down on rule breakers with a Fitzroy restaurant slapped with an almost $10,000 fine. China Bar is accused of providing table service, which is a breach of strict antivirus controls, but staff say it was a social visit, not business. They just sat down for a while and they were going to leave, but they're drinking. But when they came in at the first time, I think they're already drunk. The state's police force has now carried out more than 7,000 spot checks. An unlicensed Queensland brothel has been slapped with the state's first fines for flouting the new public health directives. The Brisbane Massage Parlour was fined more than $6,000, while a worker was fined over a grand for offering services against laws. The two women are due to face court in June, while the business remains closed. South Australian health authorities are investigating a cluster of coronavirus cases among baggage handlers at Adelaide Airport. A flight from Sydney to Adelaide had to be turned back last night after six Qantas staff tested positive to COVID-19. There are fears they could have exposed around 100 other workers at the airport, with most of them now being told to self-quarantine. Anyone who has travelled through the airport in the past 24 hours has been urged to disinfect their bags. Two Australian Border Force officers have tested positive to coronavirus. The officers from New South Wales and Queensland have been self-isolating since the diagnosis. Anyone who may have come into contact with them has been notified by health authorities. It's not yet known when they tested positive to the illness. In Melbourne, six frontline healthcare workers have contracted the virus. The staff at Box Hill Hospital tested positive for COVID-19 yesterday. Health authorities are working to track down patients and staff who came into contact with them. They're also cleaning and sanitising the areas where they had been working. The Australian government has partnered with the private health sector to boost the capacity of our hospitals during the COVID-19 crisis. Political reporter Olivia Leeming is in Canberra. Olivia, this is a landmark deal. Yeah, and ensuring not only private hospitals stay open during this pandemic, but that they can be used by coronavirus patients. Under this deal, more than 100,000 doctors and nurses, as well as an extra 30,000 private hospital beds, will be moved to the public system, along with uh, the number of ventilated intensive care beds. They will double to 4,400. At the moment, just over 20 are being used to treat COVID-19 patients, but that figure could jump in coming weeks. This will cost the federal government $1.3 billion, but it says it is willing to spend more if needed. Many private hospitals were facing closure because of this ban on uh, non-urgent elective surgery, their main source of income. But now, under this deal, their future is guaranteed. Here's what the health minister had to say. Our second task is to boost the capacity of our hospitals to deal with this outbreak, to provide the support for our patients, to guarantee that we can fight to protect every life of every Australian. Now, in further good news, a world first new flu vaccine will be available in Australia from today. It will be free for anyone over the age of 65, as well as pregnant women, Indigenous Australians and children under the age of five. Now, it obviously won't uh, vaccinate against the coronavirus, but it could prevent that dangerous double, double or whammy of the coronavirus and the flu for those vulnerable patients and easing the burden on our health system. 
system, Angie. Thanks very much, Olivia. The government's $130 billion JobKeeper allowance has been inundated with applications, with a quarter of a million employees signing up in the first day. Prime Minister Scott Morrison made the announcement as part of an economic stimulus measure aimed at keeping people in their jobs. The government expects more than 6 million people will be eligible for the $1,500 a fortnight wage subsidy, which will last for six months. The COVID-19 pandemic will force the federal and state governments into their highest levels of debt since the Second World War. Expensive stimulus measures, including the JobKeeper subsidy, is expected to push public debt to $1.5 trillion next year. Servicing the debt could also see governments making radical decisions, including a renegotiation of the GST. The first recorded death in the ACT from COVID-19 was a passenger on the Ruby Princess cruise ship. The woman, aged in her 80s, died at Canberra Hospital at the weekend. It's only now been confirmed she was a passenger on that ship. The vessel has been linked to hundreds of cases after passengers were allowed to disembark without checks. A number of crew members have been medically evacuated from the cruise liner and rushed to Sydney hospitals in recent days. The government's decision to close Victorian gun shops in a bid to prevent stockpiling over domestic violence concerns has been met with anger. It comes after authorities noticed an increase in the administration of firearm permits during the outbreak. Those with a need to access guns for essential services will still be able to. Victoria Police established an enforcement squad of 500 officers to ensure the new measures are followed. Locals working from home became unexpected heroes for this kangaroo in trouble on the Gold Coast. Residents spotted the animal struggling in deep water in a canal and launched a rescue operation on kayak and jet ski. And we were having a bit of a joke about social distancing and, and how we were maintaining it. The lucky roo was seen hopping away following a good rest. Coming up on 7 Early News, a check of finance, plus cases climbing the startling coronavirus trend in the US as cities hit their peak. And the little boy trying to make a big difference for our frontline health workers. That's next. The death toll from the coronavirus pandemic in the US has passed 3,000. There are now more than 164,000 confirmed cases of COVID-19 in the US, almost double the number there were in China. The US has hit a record high single-day death toll of more than 500. New York State remains the epicentre of the outbreak with more than 1,200 deaths. The UK has also recorded its biggest daily rise in coronavirus deaths with 3,000 393 people dying from the disease. The total number of deaths in the UK since the outbreak began now stands at more than 1,800. The government says there are now more than 25,000 confirmed cases of coronavirus. Prime Minister Boris Johnson has chaired a meeting of his cabinet by video link as he continues to self-isolate after testing positive. Across Europe, the number of coronavirus cases continues to surge. Spain has reported 849 new deaths in its worst day yet of the outbreak. Italy's death toll has climbed by 812 to more than 11,500. However, the country's infection rate is slowing. France has recorded its worst ever daily death toll with 418, taking the total to more than 3,000. And a 12-year-old Belgium girl has become the youngest person in Europe to die from coronavirus. Indonesia is the latest country to close its borders to foreigners. Health officials are hoping to contain the virus with only 1,500 people reportedly infected. However, the low number could be due to a lack of testing. Beaches on the holiday island of Bali have been closed and the normally busy airport is deserted. Checking finance now, the Dow Jones is down 200 points. The Nasdaq's also fallen. In London, the FTSE 100 has climbed 108 and Germany's DAX has surged. Closer to home, Japan's Nikkei closed lower. Hong Kong's Hang Seng climbed 428. Yesterday, the All Lords closed down 83 points and the ASX 200 also fell. On the commodities market, gold is trading at 1589 US dollars an ounce. Oil is 20 US dollars a barrel. The Aussie dollar is buying just under under 61 US cents, 65 Japanese yen and a dollar to New Zealand. They're spending long hours away from their families, but one Sydney boy is making sure some of our workers on the front line don't miss out on home cooked treats and his thank you snacks are proving a real sugar hit. 
sweet delivery from a little entrepreneur. Oh, thank you. What are these for? These are for how you guys help everyone and the community. Normally, 11-year-old Cruz Rapaya charges for his delicious cupcakes, but now he's busy in the kitchen making hundreds of them and dropping them off to emergency service workers around Campbelltown. I've just been giving cupcakes out to like police stations and hospitals because of how they're like really nice and they're just putting their lives on the front line. Aged care workers, many who start work early and finish late, find it hard to get to the shops. So these care packages are really helping. Me and my husband will gonna will not be hungry anymore. <laughs> Milk, egg, pasta, um, tomato sauce, toilet paper, for them to be able to have the supplies at home and not be worried. Small acts of kindness like these do a lot to keep spirits high and boost morale. Letting our health workers in particular know their service is appreciated. A different way of spreading positive vibes. This combi van certainly getting us dancing on the inside. Jessica Ridley, 7 News. Next on 7 Early News, the battle continues between the NRL and its players as the Players Association is set to agree to an enormous pay cut. And with the AFL pay dispute finally sorted, players settle into life at home. The Rugby League Players Association is set to agree to a 75% pay cut today, but players remain frustrated that head office executives will only take a 25% reduction. West Tigers was forced to stand down the bulk of its staff with no pay yesterday. Only a few essential staff will remain on drastically reduced hours. Probably don't get the recognition they deserve that um, are there on game days, are there during the week, that it work around the clock to, to let us do what we do on the field. South star Tom Burgess is keeping busy at home watching his daughter Sophie while working out in his living room. The Brisbane Lions may have to give up home ground advantage if the AFL season resumes later this year. If the season does return, it may conflict with the summer of cricket. Despite players taking an enormous pay cut to help the code survive, Crows skipper Rory Sloan says he's relieved a deal has finally been done. Just relief for players uh, that they know where they stand now and um, they know where their financial situation is at because um, I can imagine there would have been a lot of stress uh, around pay throughout the comp. Crows AFLW ruck Jess Foley has announced her retirement saying the coronavirus has given her some perspective. Foley will continue her career in medicine in country Victoria. Aussie cricket captain Tim Payne's home workouts have been put on hold. His car was broken into after moving it into the street so he could convert his garage to a home gym. Been outside and the door was wide open and uh, wallet and a few other things had, had gone, so I um, don't do fitness. Payne also says he'd fully support Steve Smith regaining the test captaincy at some point in the future. Australia's test tour of Bangladesh in June is unlikely to go ahead. The enterprising response for Australian motorsport is already playing a real role to help fight coronavirus. We're seeing clearly the men in the garages are just as good as the daredevils who normally take the accolades. At home on the family property... The Aussie thriller Jack Miller's riding dirt bikes instead of starting 2020 as Ducati's great new hope in MotoGP. Ride it out, I think everyone needs to stay safe, stay calm and uh, yeah, just let these sort of things blow over. Italy and Spain and MotoGP heartland, it's the last thing that matters there for now. By the sounds of it, they don't know when they're getting out. While the stars are at loose ends tinkering at home, their crews are putting their ingenuity to critical use. We can uh, design it, manufacture it, test it and get it back out into uh, where it's needed. This is the Triple Eight garage, normally used for building Red Bull Holden supercars. One week we're at the, at the racetrack trying to, trying to go fast and the next thing uh, the whole world is, is screaming out for ventilators. From design to prototype in three days, a ventilator ready for Queensland hospitals in ten. In a week, from concept to supply, Erebus had their e-aerosol boxes and full face masks ready to ship to hospitals in three states. Rival team Cool Drives donating the trucks. Everyone's contributing to the cause, which is good. For once, racing is actually saving lives. The race is on around the world. The Mercedes F1 team had a new breathing aid ready for London hospitals in days. Still, the itch to get going again is there. I mean, I'm a racer. I want to go racing. Matt Carmichael, 7 News.
Next on 7 Early News, a closer look at how the weather is shaping up in your part of the country. Taking a look at the weather around the country now, a trough lingering over inland New South Wales will draw a humid air mass and bring showers across Victoria, New South Wales and southern Queensland. Another trough will generate showers across South Australia, while onshore winds will cause light showers in parts of Tasmania. Showers will also remain over the northern tropics. <laughs> around the capitals, mostly sunny in Brisbane, shower or two for Sydney, partly cloudy in Canberra with a top of 25, a possible late shower in Melbourne, possible shower in both Hobart and Adelaide, mostly sunny for Perth with a top of 28 and a possible shower or storm in Darwin and 34 degrees. And that is 7 Early News for this Wednesday the 1st of April. I'm Angie Asimus. Now it's time for Sunrise with Koshi and Nat. Breaking now, Corona crackdown. Police state officers